Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, like and comment down all your suggestions in the section below, and please check out all my other content after you're done watching this video. But in today's video, we're gonna be doing an updated 2024 Senate prediction. And before I want to get into my prediction, let's go over the poly market odds. And this is you know, another thing besides the polls that we can take into note when making predictions. And right now people think, and the betting odds think that, that Republicans have a 75% chance to win the Senate while Democrats are down there at 25% chance. And this hasn't really changed too much over time. Republicans have always had a 70 to 80% chance on almost every platform. And Poly Market is just the biggest one, the biggest betting market site where people bet you know hundreds and millions of dollars into who is going to win these races. And we can see here with 53 days left, Republicans are very heavily favored. And I do agree with this. I do think they have a pretty good chance around this chance of winning the Senate. And that is because of how favorable this map is looking to them. For example, the state of West Virginia is actually a flip. This is a Democrat seat and it will flip Republican due to the fact that the Democrat incumbent senator is retiring. So this is an automatic flip. Another flip that is said to be pretty automatic, uh, you know, not entirely sure, but almost certainly 76% chances that Montana, another Democrat seat held by John Tester will also flip. And we have another state like Ohio being very close. Uh, some other seats here that Trump uh, might win the states nationally, federally, but are much more favorable to Democrats uh, in these Senate races. But what people you know need to understand is Republicans do not need these. If Republicans just win West Virginia and Montana, they are already having 51 Senate seats and they already would have uh, the Senate. And if they didn't win Montana, but Trump won and it's a 50-50 split, then they would win through the vice president, which would be J.D. Vance in that scenario. But either way, these are our margins here. This is our margins on the uh, betting odds on poly market. So you could definitely check this out for yourself. But let's now get to our map and we're going to fill out the safe states first 12 percentage points or over for each uh, candidate for each seat and for democrats the west coast is going to be no competition here easy wins for them the same with hawaii and then we're going to go to the uh the state of minnesota actually which is also going to be safe very popular incumbent amy klobuchar is going to win by a probably a safe margin and as we can see here she does have a 96 percent chance to win and i do agree with that she is very popular in that state we're going to have all of these states up here in the northeast apart from maryland and we'll get to that later we're going to have the state of new york and the state of maine the states of vermont and maine are, are run by incumbent independents who caucus with the Democrats. And I don't know why they don't have Maine up here, but Maine, there is an election in Maine. I can guarantee you that as Angus King, he's an independent. We have Bernie Sanders, an independent. Both of them are going to win by a safe margin, similar to their 2018 wins. Maybe not to the extent of that being so safe. And a lot of these margins here that were very lopsided in 2018. Uh, well, 2018 was a blue wave year. And usually when there are presidential years, a lot of these margins will come down because there is not that much split ticket voting. But those are gonna be the safe states for Democrats and they're gonna have 40 seats off the bat and Republicans are obviously gonna pass them. They're gonna have a lot of safe seats as well. All these seats are not gonna be close. 12 percentage points are over. As we talked before, the state of West Virginia, the first flip of the night, Republicans will win that by over 12 percentage points. And now we're gonna be left with the states that are gonna be likely which are six to 12 points. And for Democrats, it's gonna be a couple. We're gonna have the state of New Mexico where there hasn't been much data, there hasn't been many numbers that have come out, not much polling, but Heinrich is pretty much favored to win by a pretty large margin. If we check out some polls, he is up right now by 9.5 percentage points on average, which is generally what I agree. I think Kamala Harris will lag behind him by a few points. So I'd place that in that margin for him. The states of Maryland and Virginia will also be in that likely column. The state of Virginia right now, they do have uh, the Democrat Kane up by a safe margin actually, uh, but I think that's a little bit overestimating of him. I think the Emerson College poll is probably the one that's gonna be most spot on. He'll probably win by around 10. And then also in the state of Maryland, which is actually labeled right now as a toss up because of how close it is in the polls. At the end of the day, Hogan, which is a Republican, Hogan is a Republican who was the governor of Maryland, 
very popular governor of Maryland. He did serve, serve two full terms and he was very liked and he's still liked a lot by the people. But this is a national race, this is a Senate race, and it's very different from those governor races where it is more federalized, it's more nationalized. So uh, people don't really split their votes as much as they would when voting for a governor. And the polls do show that she is up only 4.4. However, I do think it'll be a little more than that. I think she'll win closer to 8 to 10 when it's all said and done because Kamala Harris is going to win the state by around 25 to 30. So you're not going to see that much split voting where she does end up winning by such a narrow amount. Or in the scenario that Hogan ends up clinching this victory out. But, you know, there's always some surprises. But right now, I do think most likely scenario and probably a 99% chance of happening is that also Brooks does end up winning this seat as of now in September. And that's going to be those likely states for Democrats, Republicans, two main likely states, the states of Texas and the state of Florida. And both these states are not going to be competitive in the Senate and they're not going to be competitive in the presidential race besides what most people tell you some people are going to tell you that cruz is going to, going to get a run for his number he really is not even the polls have him up by six he's going to win by a likely margin he's going to win probably similar to what this is telling us um, some of them have him up by 10 some of them have him up by two but either way he is going to win this is not as close as the 2018 race where he was only we only won by two and obviously the numbers support that as well as the fact that trump is going to win this state by maybe even similar larger margins than his 2016 win it's definitely a different environment in the state of texas as well in the state of florida heavily right trending district this poll is very off scott is not winning by one especially since we see uh trump winning the state by probably up to 10. i think scott's gonna probably win by six or seven probably the same amount as as cruz I'd say running a little bit ahead of him. But either way, these states are both going to be in that likely column, not really contested. And if Trump wins, that would give Republicans the edge at 50 Senate seats to Democrats 43. So this is why people say that the Senate is heavily favored to go for the Republicans. But let's get to the lean seats now. And Republicans are going to have the state of Montana in that lean column. And I'm very, very hesitant to put it in likely but i really want to at the same time because of how badly it is looking for the incumbent john tester i mean he's losing the polls by 5.2 he had originally been leading uh you know the ones that had come out but ever since the summer has come and went he has been losing every poll mostly outside the margin of error and right now she is at 50 it would be impossible for him to win if she he would be at 50 and we all know that usually uh, polls are a little more accurate in these states rather than in the presidential races. So um, we could definitely see Sheehy outrunning this or lagging a little bit behind. Either way, I think he'll end up running quite in line. I really want to put it in that likely column, but right now I'm going to keep it just below likely at around a five point win for Sheehy. Trump's going to win by this state by up to 20. So it's pretty, pretty hard to see people take it splitting that much, you know, as I covered with the state of Maryland. Similar story on both sides. And speaking of split ticketing and speaking of of a race that is not going to have a lot of split ticketing as well and that will go for republicans by a lean margin is going to be the state of ohio and despite the polls in ohio looking really good for brown and they do look worse now he was up i remember by a lot larger margins he's now only only up by 3.6 there are a lot of undecideds uh, moreno still doesn't have his name out there as much as you would like to she he is a lot more known than moreno I do think Moreno is going to come out on top, especially knowing uh, the polls in the state of Ohio and how they run. Trump is going to win the state of Ohio by probably up to 15 in a best case scenario. On average, I think Trump's going to win Ohio by 12, around 12 to 14. He's going to win it in that save column. Really right trending state. Uh, right now, the betting markets have it at a, a basically a tie of 53 to 47 for Brown. And it's going to come down to turnout and it's going to come down to those ticket splitters if we do not see a lot of ticket splitters and usually in in modern times we don't see a lot of ticket splitters we're going to see moreno come on top i think by two percentage points right now and that would give republicans 52 seats but let's go to democrats now and they will have quite a few of these lean seats starting with the state of pennsylvania where i think the Democrats are favored here a lot more than in the presidential race. Right now, Trump is favored, in my opinion. 
and from a lot of data that we see and the poly market odds in the state of Pennsylvania. But Casey is going to win, I think, by a decent amount. He's very popular in his state. Uh, there have been some polls released. They've been a lot closer than we expected. He's only up by 3.4. I think he's going to end up winning by a lean margin, probably around 2 to 3. Uh, he, he won't outrun uh, Harris too much because once again ticket splitting is not very prevalent nowadays and that's going to be the theme of the story with the rest of these states where they're always going to be close no matter what because they are always going to be dragged by those presidential races the states of Michigan and the states of Wisconsin right now I do have being as also lean states between two to four all of them are probably going to be in that range they're going to outvote Kamala Harris by a pretty decent margin probably around a few percentage points which would be enough to give it to them because these races in the presidential election are going to be extremely close so having even a one point boost would put them over the top and that's why they have such lopsided margins of winning these races same thing with the polls slotkin is up by five in michigan and then wisconsin baldwin is up by six so i think democrats hold an edge here and they're up to 46 now we have the states of Nevada and Arizona left, probably the most consequential races. But, you know, either way, Republicans already have the Senate, but still very important. I mean, the state of Nevada is probably the most surprising out of all of these because in the presidential race is almost a dead tie. But in the Senate race, Rowan is, Rosen is up by 10. She is up by 10 points. Obviously, she's not going to win by 10. That is not going to happen. And a lot of times what happens is when they take these polling these uh, polls in the senate races and then compare that to the presidential races a lot of these people that are going to vote for trump just answer the polls they're going to say oh well, i'm going to vote for rosen they don't really know uh too much about the other candidate running which is brown but when they get to that ballot they end up voting the same party down the line they just do republican 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 or democrat 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 so we're seeing here a lot of trump voters that are breaking for Rosen, we got a lot of undecideds, like 10% of people are still undecided. But even with those undecideds going to, Brown, going to Brown, I do still think that she's gonna end up winning by a tilt column, by a lean margin. And that is because this is a very, very hard uh, polling miss to really get wrong, to really have her losing the state when she's up by 10. And I think Trump's going to barely win the state. And since usually Democrats are going to outrun uh, Republicans a little bit in the Senate, I do expect her to win this seat, as well as Republicans winning the state of Arizona. And this is one state that Republicans should have a lot closer than what it is. Trump is doing very well where he's up 1.6. Gallego is up 7.3. And that is a complete flip from what is going on in the presidential race and once again another one of these states where people are just going to say they're voting for trump and then maybe voting for gallego and then when they get to the ballot they're going to vote the same party all the way down but this one a little bit less than the other one because lake is well known lake is very well known in her own state she lost to um katie hobbs in the 2022 governor's race by a very narrow margin and she's very controversial in that state. And I think at the end of the day, she is going to lose. And these betting markets also have uh, both her and Brown losing by large margins in terms of the chances to win. And that'll be our map based on the my prediction. We are September 13, 2024. We have less than two months away from the election. And this is my prediction for the Senate. Republicans at 52, Democrats at 48. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, like my video, comment down all your suggestions in the section below, and I will check you guys out in the next one.